Yeah. So either you think about it as division or multiplication. Of, so either division by two or multiplication by a half. But if we only have one of those, then I've got half b times h. Now, actually, Wait. I can replace something there. Caleb? With base length, wouldn't that just be 2r? Ooh, my base length is 2r because it's the edge of the um, rectangle. What about the height, right? So this is going to be 2r times the height of that triangle. So this right here. So if I have r and 2r, or when I draw that, I'm breaking this up. And now the 36 to 90. So this also goes to show proof of my hypotenuse being twice my short leg, my 2r versus my r. <laughs> but then my height is, what'd you say? Radical three, Radical three times r. Ethan? Uh, I'm sure these pieces will form a um, circle with the radius r. So the last thing I have to add on over here is uh, area of a circle. Pi r squared. It's pi times radius squared. Wait, is it plus radical 3 times r? No, so this was our 1 half little b times little h. This is all multiplied right here. So if I go to clean this up a little bit, I have r times 2r times 3. So this can clean up to, Michelle, is that a hand for this? <coughs> okay, so then I have r times radical 3 times r, so we'll get to that part. My first section right here. Mm. Remember, string of multiplication. I can multiply all of them together. I can change order if I want to. Emma? How do you squares fit the entire area of the circle? Is some of this overlapping with the sides that I'm not getting? So what Ethan was saying was if this is 120 degrees, that's a third of the circle. This is 120 degrees, a third of a circle. And this is 120 degrees, a third of a circle. So those three thirds make a total. Caleb? Uh, R times 2 times R times 3. Wait, can you not just do R times 2R to get 3R? No, you can't. Oh, 6R squared. 6 R squared. Brain part. I know. And then, so please, as we move forward to the next one, do this one a bit nicer. We already talked about the half and the two, but now I've got R, radical 3, and R. So when I multiply those together, I get. This sec this section. The one half and the two cancel each other out. So then I have R radical three and R. Yeah, so I'm gonna put the rad three first. Radical three R squared. And we've also got pi R squared. So what I really have is 115, that area, is going to equal r squared times 6 plus pi plus radical 3. <laughs> so I have an irrational number with pi. I have a radical value that does not come out very nicely. And I have an integer value that I did not write very nicely up there. So, that, so this, sorry, I'm going to blow it. It's 6 plus pi plus radical 3. Because we had 6r squared, radical 3r squared, 
and pi r squared. Pi around squared. Got it. Pi around. Pi's are around. I hate that this is dark blue because I can't really recall. Well, I can use red. Or you can so. Like it could be, but it's not. So if we go to isolate the R squared, <coughs> we'd have to get rid of this. Right? It's not going to be repeating because radical 3 doesn't repeat, or at least that we know of. Pi we know doesn't repeat, and well, 6 is just 6. So we know we've got like 9.14 approximately, and then radical 3 is going to add another 1.7. Something like that. So when we combine all those, they give us a uh, hundreds. So approximately we have 10.87 r squared. So what we have now is 115 equals 10.87 r squared. Sorry, my smart board's having some huge issues today. This is a 10. So we can divide by 10.87. And then we'll end up with some value for r, being that r is equal to the square root Wait, that... Your 10.5 is the solution of the square root, or it is under the radical? It's under the radical. There we go. Okay, and just making sure. Radius equals 3.27. So approximately 3 and a quarter. There we go. Good work. So, all of this just to remind us, uh, thankfully, because we made a couple killer mistakes at the beginning, not realizing how to combine those, how we work with our radicals. So, when we work with radical functions, we got to remember all of our rules relating to square roots and powers. You need to be careful to remember your rules. Are we really doing radicals? Hmm? What about the length of the class you shrink? Yeah. So yeah. then, oh. we're not going to go deep into this. How much of a circumference do you have? A whole. A whole one. Yeah. Because three thirds of a circumference. And then you have two and uh, six r. And then I have six more r from the two r here, the two r there, and the two r there. So you would just compute 6r and a circumference and put them together. All right, moving on, because we need to get deeper into what we're actually doing today. Parent functions are always where we can start where nothing has been done. So I have my any root function, just my radical functions to the nth root. And I have my square root function just under the, obviously, square root. When I want to reflect it, all I do is take the opposite of it, or the negative. When I want to stretch it or change that um, steepness, we apply a coefficient in front of the radical. And when I want to shift it horizontally or vertically, I either shift under the radical for a horizontal or outside the radical for a vertical. Now again, if it's shifting like left or right, that's going to tweak whether we're doing minus or plus h. So let's play with what happens here. So this is the graph of radical x minus 2 and radical x plus 1. All we're doing is shifting vertically 2 or 1 up or down. Yes? Can you use Can you take the radical of a square root? Or bleh, can you take the square root of a negative? No. So that's where cube roots, if it was a third root, so maybe I'm misinterpreting your question about a whole curve, but when I compare square roots to cube roots, so my square root function, 
only has positive outputs and only utilizes positive inputs. There can be no negative outputs because there is no negative output of a square root when you're only looking at certain realms of the graph. So it could, it, it's all about what branch are you in, what theory are you using. So we know there are positive and negative outputs for square root. For any square root, there's a positive or negative output. So this could arc down here and kind of give us what looks to be the rest of what would look like a parabola. But we don't complicate it and show both sides of it. So when you do this, this is another one of those your calculator stupid sort of things. We know that square root of 4, when I input 4, could be 2 or it could be negative 2. But we only show the positive values. Now cube root, how do I do the any root in this one? I'll just do it to a power. So x to the one third. Oh, there's any root, of course. So third root. That's where you get your S curve. Because it is specific to whether I plugged in a positive value gives me only positive results, and a negative value gives me only negative results. So that's where those become differently. And then, of course, we could do like fourth root if we wanted, or any of those weird ones. Fourth root of X. Of course, it will get closer and closer to the x-axis because as I take higher and higher roots, I'm going to get lower and lower values. <coughs> so, uh, you don't need to graph it. I'm not going to make you guys graph them. And even on your homework, if you write specifically what has been done to the graph, unless it's a zoom change, like unless it has that coefficient, um, so we don't see any right here, but if it just has a vertical or horizontal shift, you can just tell me what the vertical or horizontal shift is. So, might as well use some cards. Not here, that's why it's so far. Emma, what has been done to that first graph right there, compared to the parent function? He's here. That wasn't who I was talking to. Really? Oh, Emma, what's been done to that graph? It's been shifted. Yeah, so this has been moved up by two. And this graph, Carmen, has been moved down by three. Yeah, it, it, this chapter's fast. It's nice, it's easy, because you're so smart already, you know most of this. Just because of everything else we've done all year long. All right, so now we look at horizontal changes. When you have x plus 4 under the radical, what does that do to the function? We mean by four. There we go. Takes it left 4. So just like we've seen before, when it's inside of the function, or before it was inside of the parentheses when we were squaring it, it is counterintuitive. So a positive will move left, and a negative or a subtraction will actually move it right. <coughs> right. <coughs> right? Oh, you ruined it. All right, so notate what has been done here. Right, but we were just playing with the word right. Right. Like, correct. Like, you got it right on the test. Caleb, what has been done to our first function here? Oh, it's been moved, uh, I think, right. No, yeah, it'd be moved right, three, and the second one is, oh, wait, never mind. Ah, oh, you can if you want. Okay, that was the left one. No, he was like two is in TO instead of TWO. Oh, uh, like, okay, yeah. Go to the bathroom. I'm not doing this. I'm going to make a card on the left to die. 
Huh. <laughs> I like it. There's, we have a route on the rock wall that has like tie dye tape and it says don't tie, don't tie. <laughs> ha. Oh, I still hey, think it's just as bad as yours. It was a hair I thought it was right. Why did the call if everybody dies? Okay. Hey, everybody you do. All right, so here, hold on, another down example for you. Here we've done everything. We've got a vertical shift, a horizontal shift, and a, what the, I keep forgetting what they called the, a stretch. So, and the negative on the stretch reflects it. So this is why we only show the positive. Otherwise, the reflection wouldn't really do anything, right? Because if I reflect a, like, imagine reflecting a parabola around the y-axis. It would look exactly the same. So that's why we start with radical functions Every by just showing the... We should have you do it all about the functions around the y-axis. Around the y-axis. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Moving on. I, I would much prefer, like, they were asking about doing probability theory in games. I would much prefer to, like, do a unit like that at the end of the year. That's what I as opposed to... I appreciate you. I, like, I'm trying to get us through. All we have is chapter 14 yeah. and 15, and then we're done with graded course of study. Yeah. We're going to go back and do a little bit of review on unit circle, because there tends to be some unit circle stuff on your end of the year test. So, from the initial parent function that you see dotted here, we apply the reflection and the stretch, which actually brings it closer to the x-axis. Then we apply the horizontal and the vertical shifts and we end up at our blue function. Any questions there? Wait. Oh, oh, okay. So they applied all four things, well, reflection, right. stretch, and both translations. What'd you say? What do you mean? Well, they look right. Like, the negative is just opposite. Like, circle left and the um, translation is right and right. It's just here. What? You mean the order that they did it in? Yeah. Yes. Sure, but they didn't show every single. If they wanted to work left or right, they should have showed the reflection first, <coughs> then the change in um, steepness, the stretch, then the horizontal, then the vertical. But, yeah, sure, yeah. It won't capture it if there's no ink. I know. All right, on the back. So notate what has been done here, and then we're actually going to make the graph. Like, or we're going to make a little table at least. Megan? Okay, so on the front, so like the thing is on top, it says string if one is, wait, if one is less than A, which is less than one. So How if. This should be negative. If A is less, if A is between negative one and one. So the negative only makes it flip, right? So these essentially zero to one is gonna bring you closer to the x-axis. Anything over one will take you further away. So shrink is anything less than one, like between, between negative one and one, but if we ignore sine, it's anything less than one. Stretch is anything bigger than one. Uh, I mean, no, because zero doesn't affect, it just makes it disappear. Zero times anything is zero, and then that wouldn't work. And that would just be the k value. So, that it gets, it pulls it further away from the axis. Wasn't, that a, wasn't there a fancy word we had for that? I mean, we've made up no, lots of words for that. We've, so, yeah, we have talked about it as compression. So, Max, what does this 3 do? So, it's going to stretch 3. How could we talk about the stretch? It stretches 3. Yeah, so this is 3 times the distance from the x-axis as the you can rephrase it however you want but 
w compared to the parent function. So if the parent function had an output of, I don't know, six, then this stretch will give you an output of 18. <coughs> Stretches it three times, or it makes your output values three times larger, if you want to say it that way. Then, Rhea, what does the two do? Yeah, a left shift of two. And Ethan, the four? Down. And there's the proper use of the word down. <laughs> so let's do um, X radical X. So that would just be our parent function, and y for the function we're working with here. So let's just choose some positive values. What if x is, I'm going to make our lives easy, 4, 9, 16, and 25? So why did I choose those values? They're all, they're, they're all perfect squares. So my square roots will be 2, 3, 4, and 5. But the shifted function... Um, let me think. You're saying that the output on this is the same as the output on the other? We have to immediately add 2 under the radical. Okay, and then square root of 6. Yeah, so now we have square root of 6. Ooh, all the steam could have been square. We needed values. Mm, that's where the danger of the change in the radical comes in. So where these worked out really nice for the parent function, they don't work out very nice here. So, we can use our calculator, especially if we're using a graphing calculator, we could build a table with this as our y1 function and just input values and have it spit them out to get our first one here. Somebody's on the roof. Look at my screen. Someone's on the roof. 3.35, you said? Can I just add one here? Will that work? If all I did was add one here, well, it shifted, shifted, changed. Oh, it changed my steepness, right? We have a stretch. So let's see. Does that work? Well, if I plug in um, 9, 9 plus 2, radical 11, what'd you get here? 5.95. Yeah, it didn't work like the other one. And again, you can type in this function once and keep grabbing the same <laughs> input, like input of the function, and then just change your initial x value. Did you get the next one, Kyle? What, 8.73? I mean, whoever had it, just tell me if you got it. I'm just waiting for calculation. And then... Um, So we could graph that if we wanted, or have a utility do it. Now, sometimes when we work with models, we modify our inputs to match that when I start tracking data, I want that to be like my zero year, or my year one, or whatever. So, excuse me, we here are trying to compensate by taking away the 1950. Excuse me, it says you can model <clears throat> the population of Corpus Christi, Texas between the years 1970 and 2005 by the radi radical function shown there. Yeah, it is. In what year was the population 250,000? 
So now we got to manipulate this, knowing what the output is, Weird. trying to find the input. Kind of like reverse it. Yes. Like That's the, exactly what we need to do uh, here. Uh, so what do you mean? Like you plug the P50K into the left. So I get 250,000 I mean, you already told her what to do. She yeah. was just giving you your answer. So, wait, three and a third. Nah, we don't really like three and a third. Is there any way that I can say that differently? Nah, we don't really like that either. Oh. Ten thirds. Improper fractions are nicer. So, ten thirds equals the cube root of x minus 1950, and that minus 1950 is stuck under the radical. What? You said it first. I know. So, yeah, we can cube each side. Yeah. Uh, cube your numerator, cube your denominator. Like cheese, he said. You cube cheese. Oh. Uh, the cheese cubes. You uh, are very funny. That wasn't under the other one. I wasn't one of your zingers. What did you get? 37. That's fine. That works out nicely. No, it doesn't. What? 37 points. Since we're working with years, we might have lost 1950. Actually, we might have lost 1950. How did we go from 10 to 37? Because we cubed ten thirds. Notice why I write things in the colors I do. My left side is ten thirds. Then what I'm doing is the cube action. So it's one thousand and thirty-seven, which is thirty-seven. What? What is it actually? Thirty-seven. Point oh thirty-seven. Yeah. So when it's three hundredths close, like yeah. I mean, what three hundredths of a year would be? 3.6 days, so 3 hundredths would be like another almost 11 days, I guess. So that'd be 11 days into 1987. Alright, any questions on how we work through a solution process like this? you got to be really careful. I don't know what you're eating, but... They would give me Oreos. Okay. I thought they were Thin Mints, I was going to say they should be frozen. you got to be very careful. The mistake that I see people make is they try to bring this 1950 out of here without getting rid of the radical. So please avoid that mistake. I'm telling you now so you don't do it. Tell me. Why? So it says it's between the years 1970 and 2005. So that's... Sorry, go ahead and ask your question. I'm inferring what your question is. So why is it going at... Why is X years since 1950? So this function that they've given you only works to model the data in that range. So they probably had data collection starting in 1950 and that has something to do with it, but where the function actually like turns into a function that we can express is between the years 1970 and 2005. So we'd have to know more about the situation here to know why they chose that as like the, the compensating value. Um, so yeah, it, there's got to be some reason. <coughs> So the other way that we can do this is not manually. So most of the time I expect you guys to say, like, we don't have to do this. We can. So right here I showed you guys how we can figure that out. And there's that part that you rounded off of that 0.04. And that's even rounded to that decimal place. But if I just create a secondary function with the value that I'm looking for, so 250,000, now we would have had to modify our window insanely for this, 
That's why I'm not having us do it like that. But if you know that the value you're trying to find is 250,000, your Y value on your window is going to need to be more than that. So they make their Y window up to 300,000, and they just make each of these like 50,000, each of the Y differences. Let's try this, but let's go ahead and try this in the calculator so we can save ourselves some work. So you want to set up two different functions, one being the function given to us, the other being the value that you're trying to solve for. <coughs> He's probably laughing because now you're nervous about you know. Now you're scared acting. They're good. Did you poison that? Me. Tell me if you poisoned that. It's already in my body. <laughs> I feel like that. I mean, I wouldn't well, 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 enjoy the moment. I wouldn't enjoy the moment. I just feel like I wouldn't want to know. Would you rather? Yeah, I was about to say, would you rather prefer to know or just be. Or just die in peace? I would prefer to know because maybe, like, you could take me to the hospital. Maybe. So, one of your functions, hey, one of your functions is going to utilize cube root. You can either grab a cube root through the math menu. So, I'm going to set up y equals, and we want 75,000. Then cube root x minus 1950. So I'm just going to go math, and there's my cube root in option four. Or you can use x root if you need the any root. Make sure you close your parentheses. My second function will be the value that I'm trying to solve for. So 275,000. When you go to graph it, don't even hit graph yet, because you're just going to break your graph. You're going to try to, like, it might get stuck loading. It might tell you that it's outside of your window. But if you know that I need to graph a line of y being 275,000, change your window right now. And we already know that we found an x value of 37. But, or, yeah, 37 last time, right? So I'm going to make my x's go. I'm actually going to start probably negative 10 just so I can see my axis up to, I don't know, I'll go like 50 years, not 5. I might as well make that change by my y min. Um, I don't really care about seeing my x axis, but if I, I don't know, I act like I care. So make that 50,000, make this 300,000 because I know that will show my value that I want. I'm going to make each of these 50,000 for the y difference. I, I, that's why I took my hands off and did wait. I'm not. I stopped wearing contacts here because the air is too dry. Yeah, that's probably why. My first year teaching, I wore contacts a lot of the year, and by the end of the day, my eyes would be red and like agitated. This too, when I help students, oh, just right. get chalk all over the place. Sometimes, like when, like Wait, go more toward the night, I three hundred thousand. Because remember, we are trying to show a y value of two hundred seventy-five thousand. All I got was a straight line. Yeah, mine was. Our window is. Uh, it was for the example. Yeah, I just wanted us to practice if we we're able to do it this method. I'm not arguing which is faster, which is better, any of that stuff. Yeah, I think our. Whoa, wait, you made it what? For your X window or your Y window? You made it what? Because our X window is years. I don't know. I didn't change Oh, yeah. Hold up. 
So remember, our x input is actually what year it is, not how many years it has been oh, since we yeah. start. I, I made mine 5,000. So our x years need to go. It told me the range from 1970 to 2005. Try that. That is the range in which they told me my data was being Wait, modeled. Was so like the five I made my window from 1970 to 2005. We were not far enough down the x-axis to see where that radical function starts because that radical function didn't start until I think the year 1950. So if I model this from like 1950 to 2005, that's where my function begins. I can get that. So Calvin, to answer your question, like this is not real data from the city. So I could make another, um, I would actually need this to be an x equals, I, I can't change this to x equals right now. Um, but if I could do a vertical line at 1970, what did I make my window? Five. So that would be 55, 60, 65, 70, right here is where the data actually becomes accurate. So anything before that does not accurately show what was happening to the city. Or what is this modeling? Population. So this would not be a true representation of the population because it was not a population of zero in 1950. But the growth model that we're using wouldn't work to fit the data there. So maybe we have a different growth model previous to that that's linear. Or maybe it doesn't match any sort of function. You know what I mean? Wait, so, then we, we go to calculate our intersect. so then calculate your intersect. Yeah. <laughs> and if you need to make your window longer, go beyond year 2005. So go That's, to like, I don't know, this year. My window's why, not high I, why is it not working? I have the same window as you. I doubt it. I changed my window like nine times. I found it, babe. Like this one, I just changed to the same one. I think I got the right one. Your Y name literally needs to be. So. You did cube root to the cube root. You did cube root twice. That's why your function so shrunk down. Wait, 1999. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Ah, yeah. So I do second calc. Intersect. 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 Well, I'll go over to it. I had a friend in high school who figured out that on a lot of like a lot of times you don't even have to go to it because the computer will just like move it where it needs to. So he would always. Wait, how did you get the intersect of one? You tell it to. You draw a line. Yes. So I literally set up a y equals of two hundred seventy-five thousand. That's what I did. Then they cross through each other, so there is an intersection. The question is, where is it? And that's when I use my function for intersect or my operation, whatever you want to call this, my calculate, which then pages. All right, that is all the time that we have for today. I'm going to give you guys homework. It still doesn't work. Mr. Hot, what do you mean? Let me check what you had typed in. It's 1999. Boom! Boom! What do you mean it's not working? It's right there, it's your intersection point. So you second trace, do your intersect. What? That was a racist note. Blocks. No. I was trying to. No, you didn't write it on the track. Ha! I asked you to. That wants to be the middle of one of the intersections. Sorry, basketball. She's just like a max Oh, max Why are you trying to calculate max I just took Oh, I did four instead of five. So I did intersect like I'm supposed to. So I got your homework here. Yeah,
Yeah, I don't want to put homework on your stuff. So, of course, you can solve those manually if you would like, or you can solve them graphically. Actually, we're a PG school when it comes to like showing videos to everybody.